Yo YouTube, I am the one, Elliot Hulse, and in this video, I'm gonna answer the question, should Christians do bioenergetics? So last week, I uploaded a series of videos talking about the power of bioenergetic exercises in order to promote my grounding camp. And grounding camp is designed to help awkward and shy guys become confident and charismatic in their communication through the use of bioenergetic analysis and bioenergetic exercises. And there were several Christian brothers who have hit me up either in the comments or sent me a message personally. Is bioenergetic consistent with Christian teaching? And so that's what I'm going to explore in this video because it can very easily be washed up with the new age thinking and stuff. And there's a very fine line there. We wanna make sure that bioenergetic exercises are not crossing that line for various spiritual and dogmatic reasons, which are valid. So today I'm going to show why I believe bioenergetic exercises are consistent with Christian and church teachings. First, we're gonna define what bioenergetic exercises actually are, what it isn't, based on the words of the founder, Dr. Alexander Lowen. Then we'll take a look at whether bioenergetic exercises consist of being new age therapy or deception. And then finally, we'll take a look at the traditions of the church as it relates to bioenergetic exercises and other similar types of therapies. So let's dive in. So the very first thing I wanna do is I'm gonna read from the website of the Alexander Lowen Foundation uh, as to the definition of bioenergetics. This will be helpful to you. Bioenergetics is a way of understanding personality in terms of the body and its energetic processes. Now that word energetic processes or that phrase is, it could be problematic. So we're gonna circle back and we're gonna take a look at that. What are these energetic processes? Uh, as a pioneer in this field, Alexander Lowen, MD, developed bioenergetics as a therapeutic technique to help people get back together with their body and enjoy the life of the body to the fullest degree possible. Now I'm gonna stop there before continuing to read and just say 100% that idea of being one with the body and enjoying the life of the body is 100% consistent with our incarnate faith. If the body wasn't good, then God wouldn't have inhabited a body and come as Christ, God in the flesh. And so that whole idea that the body it should be uh, ignored or the body's icky or the body is devilish or the body is bad or the body's wrong was completely washed away as a heresy. I believe it was called the Manichaean heresy that was squashed and dealt with in like, you know, like 500 AD. Don't quote me. But it was absolutely dealt with. Look up Manichaeanism. Christians believe in the sanctity and the divinity of the body, i.e. Christ, the incarnate faith. Continuing, bioenergetics starts with essential functions, with the essential functions of the body, such as breathing, motility, which is the movement of fluid, like blood in the body that happens unconsciously, uh, feeling and expression. So breathing, well, you, we do know that God breathed into the clay and made Adam, so <laughs> no problem there. Uh, motility, well, motility is what happens when the emotions, when the feelings, when the movement, natural, spontaneous, just God-guided movements of the body are natural and free-flowing rather than rigid, stuck, and, um, and uh, unable to move freely, uh, which includes feeling and self-expression. And we know that self-expression is all that we do as human beings. If there's no self-expression, there's no human being. Bioenergetics, continuing, bioenergetics examines the body-mind restrictions on these functions, physically in one's body, emotionally in one's feeling, and intellectually in one's understanding. So we know that there are natural functions in one's body that needs to be, needs, you, we gotta get out of the way and allow it to unfold naturally, as well as emotions and one's feelings. Now, there could be some confusion in terms of those who believe that we should follow our emotions and our feelings and that are always right, which is not consistent with Christian teaching, but the fact that emotions are there, they will be there un until you leave this earth, until you don't have a body, there will always be emotion, there will always be feeling. The, 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 in order to have feeling, you gotta have a body. Right? And with a body, there's feeling, right? So there's feeling. So we know that there's nothing uh, weird about that. And of course, intellectually, we know how the mind can affect the body. You think a particular thought, your body will respond. Cool. So, so far, we're not really crossing into any weird territory. Bioenergetic differs from other forms of thera therapy 
in that it combines analysis of a person's personality and character with body techniques and physical exercises to recognize and release chronic muscular tension. No problem there. Uh, in, in Christianity, in Catholicism, there are personality types. I think the, uh, St. Thomas Aquinas was the one who sort of proposed this uh, idea of um, the four personality types. I can't remember what it's called. But Christians and Catholics in particular will discern a vocation based on their the analysis of their personality. So there's, there's nothing weird about that. Uh, it, and, and even more with what we're doing in bioenergetics, it's consistent because it is literally looking at the body, what the eyes see about the body. It's not uh, esoteric, woo -woo, wild and out there stuff. It's like, hey, I see your body says that you are slumping over. Therefore, it is consistent with a sad feeling, right? My lips go like this. It might mean I'm sad if I go like this. It might mean I'm happy. It's just looking at the body and saying, okay, what emotion is the body expressing, right? So I don't think there's any problem with that there. Um, and, and so all of these are a necessary step in overcoming feelings, behaviors, and attitudes that detract from life. And, you know, we know that we can attract those types of ways of being that will detract from our life. Bioenergetics recognizes the ability of the body to heal itself and promote that process. Now, anybody who doesn't believe that the body can heal itself doesn't believe in God. If you think that I need a pill and I need surgery or I need someone to surgically psychoanalyze me and that my body can't do it alone means that we do not believe in the power and the divinity and the sanctity of the body, the power of the body, the body's ability to do what it needs to do, right? We know that that is there. That's consistent. I don't need an MD to always heal me, right? That's a boomer way of thinking. And I know some of you guys have really adopted and maintained boomer thought. But boomer thought says, only the doctor can heal me. Um, that's wrong. Continuing, so based on this description, the one thing that stands out to me is the use of the word energy. So these are my words. Energy or energies which can be easily misunderstood as some kind of invisible magic stuff or spirits that is not what is being spoke of here. Here energy is defined as the movement of feeling, expression, self-perception, self-possession, and self-expression. Uh, so we got self-perception, possession, and expression, right? That's what energy is. Like, I'm delivering energy right now as I speak to you through this camera. This is my energy. You're getting my energy, right? You know when you're low energy because you're tired, right? Nothing wacky, nothing wild, woo-woo about the idea of energy. So that being said, that was a very short introduction to bioenergetics. You can continue to read the full article that explains it on the Alexander Lowen Foundation website or click a link. I'll put my blog post associated with this here uh, in this video at some point. Cool. So then question number two, right? Okay. Well, the way it's described by the Alexander Lowen Foundation, Alexander Lowen himself, and those who practice and understand bioenergetics, that it's totally consistent with Christian teaching. There's nothing out of sorts. But let's go a little bit further. Let's take a, a page out of the book, Medications and Meditations of the New Age, which is an out-of-print book that was sent to me by my friend. Uh, and he says, my friend who sent me this book, or sh shots from the book, said, I'm adding the broad way and the more in-depth way of determining whether or not bioenergetic practice is a New Age practice from this book that was written by uh, Michael Prabhu, who's an, a Catholic Apologist. Okay, so let's go through. I'm going to continue reading here. There are some broad factors that can guide even a novice in identifying whether something is new age or not. So if you're afraid that something may be new age, here are some broad descriptions, a broad way of looking at something, a sweeping view of something to say whether or not, hey, this may be new age, it may not be. Number one, the discipline is presented as spiritual but not religious. Now, I'm going to reiterate this again later on, but Alexander Lowen was very adamant about keeping bioenergetics within the medical model. In fact, he had a business partner by the name Periochus. I think it was uh, Steve Periochus, something like that. I forget his last name, first name. Periochus, though, who created something called Core Energetics because he split with, with uh, Alexander Lowen. There was two of them. There was Periochus and there was Lowen, and they created bioenergetics together. But 
Periochus wanted to get real woo-woo with it, and he was claiming to see visions and to hear things and to see things, right? And so he, the two of them split off because Lowen was like, no, we're not going down that weird route. We're going to keep it very medicalized. You can go and create your own thing. And he created something called core energetics. And that is uh, that's totally 100% new age because it's all about spiritual stuff. Bioenergetics is not spiritual. Number two, the terminology being used in the promotion of the program or the therapy could betray its new age foundations. So according to this book, you know, I, I have my opinions also, I'm just reading straight from the book, things like affirmations, altered states of consciousness. Now I'm gonna pause there. Alter states of consciousness do, are not consistent with bioenergetics. I may have said that before in other videos, but the alter state of consciousness associated with bioenergetics is no different than running a, around the block five times. <sighs> you're thinking, you're behaving, you're feeling very, very different after running around the block because you're breathing, you're moving, there, something lights up in your brain, there are endorphins, there's all kinds of hormones. So to say altered state of consciousness, consciousness based off breathing and moving is very different. I mean, you could turn it off the minute you want, right? Altered state of consciousness from breathing and moving. Well, stop breathing and stop moving and just calm down and ground yourself. Right? You don't have to wait for the high to wear off. It's not an altered state of consciousness. It is a human state of consciousness elevated because of full self-expression, meaning deep breathing and movement of the body, right? So it's not an altered state of consciousness like I took a drug. You take a drug and you don't do anything. You, your brain just goes somewhere else. I don't totally understand it, but, the, but they're two totally different things. Also, attunement, aura, chakras, comic ed cosmic energy, holistic, holism, harmony, Harmonic convergence, interconnectedness, intuition. Like, I don't know, some of the stuff I don't agree with. Like, what do you mean intuition? Um, life force, oneness, prana, meridian, subtle body, synergy. What's wrong with synergy? Uh, vibrations. What's wrong with vibration? I'm vibrating right now. We all vibrate. Everything in the universe is vibrating. Everything in the world is vibrating. Everything in creation freaking vibrates at some level. Visualization. What is prayer? I don't know. Now I'm kind of arguing with the book. I'll continue. Vital body, universal energy, wellness. I don't know. But this is a broad stroke, right? This is a broad stroke. So, you, so in other words, be careful when you hear these terms. The next broad stroke is religious philosophies and backgrounds of their founders and promoters. So Alexander Lowen was nothing. He was kind of Jewish, but never really practiced it. He was a scientist and he was a lawyer and he was interested in facts. Later on in his career, he ended up writing a book called The Spirituality of the Body. Now, that, this may sort of sound like it's getting new age, but all he really tried to explain in that body is that there is a freedom from personal baggage and holding tension and shit like that when you experience bioenergetics. You could read the book if you'd like to. I mean, I can go on and on about it. And then number four, broad stroke, is the compatibility of a particular program or therapy or product with other new age practices. And like I told you, Lowen split off completely from Periochus, so it's not associated with any new age practice. Cool. So those are the broad strokes associated why, with why you shouldn't worry about bioenergetics being anti-Christian or, or, or condemned by Christianity. But let's go deeper. So in that book, there are 12 caveats. And each of these caveats need to be considered as it relates to bioenergetics and whether or not it's putting your soul at risk for damnation, right? And if you're a Protestant, you probably shouldn't worry too much about this because as long as you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you can't lose your salvation, according to some Protestants, right? Catholics, it's much different. According to the Catholic tradition, you could screw up and lose it, right? But this is not a theological debate. This is about whether we as Christians all around should be doing it. So first caveat. Beware of therapies that are energy-based and claim to manipulate invisible or mystical energies or rely on psychic anatomies. Okay. So, once again, mystical energies and manipulating invisible energies and psychic anatomies is not consistent with what's happening when we say bioenergetics or use the word energy. We're talking about the most blatant, blatant obvious to the eyeballs energy, like you're seeing me produce right now. There's nothing mystical about it. It is not invisible. Even we can, we can, 
We can dial back these energies to the neurotransmitters. We could dial them back to hormones and we could look at it as plain as eyesight by the movement of the muscular system, right? And we also know that there's piezoelectric currents that, 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 that are in the muscle, that, that permeate the muscle. Muscles actually create energy. That energy's all there. You want to give it a different name? Well, then maybe we get a little wacky when we do that. We call it, you know, something more religious or spiritual. But energy is a physics word, right? It's very, it's, in this context, very simple. So, uh, you know, he gives examples. Caveat number two, beware of those who seem to use psychic knowledge, powers, or abilities. I don't, I'm not psychic, not claiming to be, neither did Lowen. Number three, beware of a practitioner who has a therapy that no one has ever heard of. Alexander Lowen, MD, and bioenergetic analysis has been around since the 1970s, and there are associations throughout the Americas and throughout the world associated with bioenergetics. It's rare, rarely spoken of, but well documented and spoken of for the past 50 years or so. Um, number five, beware of any technique that is promoted before it has been validated by mainstream science. I'm going to drop that one because what the fuck is mainstream science? COVID, right? I'm not even going to go there, right? There's, there, there is no sanctifying body in science. That's just, I'm just explaining something. There's no trusted body in science. There's no trusted body in most religion either, but we'll get to that in a moment, right? So what is what the heck is mainstream science, right? Is it CNN science? I don't know. So I'm going to kind of like put an asterisk next to that one because mainstream science has devalidated itself in my mind and the mind of many others. Number six, beware of someone whose explanations are bizarre or don't make any sense. I've taken the time to create a series of videos that explain bioenergetics, and for most people, it makes sense. But even if it doesn't make sense to you, because it's a little off into left field, you know, it's, it's, it isn't mainstream. You can read any 12 of Alexander Lowen's books that he wrote, and you can get a grasp. In fact, you can be explained to a baby. You can be explained to a child how your thoughts manifest themselves physically, uh, you know? Close your eyes and think about cutting open a lemon and bring that lemon to your lips and, and then lick the lemon and squeeze the lemon into your mouth. And then all of a sudden, sal saliva. Ooh, was that magic? Was that mystical? Was that demonic? No, motherfucker, you were thinking about a lemon, so your mouth got watery. Thoughts create something. Good, so it's not that weird. Beware of therapies that rely on entering altered states of consciousness. You're not going into altered states of consciousness with um, bioenergetics, like I explained before. Beware of therapies whose primary proof is the claim of satisfied clients. Well, there are satisfied clients with regard to bioenergetics, but the primary proof is in much of what we discovered in trauma release therapy or, or, or post-traumatic syndrome therapy. Like this stuff is becoming more mainstream in the therapeutic communities. So that, that gives it some scientific and medical legitimacy. And it's really sort of kind of new. It's not new age, it's kind of new. I'd say over the past 10 years has really exploded in, in awareness. What else? Realize the practitioner's sincerity is no guarantee of scientific or medical legitimacy, right? So that's based on the individual. Like if you just love Elliot and so you say, oh, it must be legit. Well, I will warn you, don't do that. Um, number 10, beware of any method that has been scientifically disproven. This hasn't been disproven. In fact, it's becoming more and more proven. Uh, beware of a therapist who claims to diagnose or treat patients on intuition. Nothing intuitive about the core of bioenergetics. Of course, every doctor has some intuitive factor that's built in based on his amount of reps that he's gotten doing what he does, right? I mean, you look at another number of bodies, like you can figure things out much, uh, Malcolm Gladwell calls it thin slicing. It's much more thin sliced. But this is not intuition. This is based on what I actually see, what you actually see. And then number 12, avoid any therapist who thinks his methods are specifically connected to God, right? Like this came from God and there's no claim there. Good. So those caveats based on a book that's designed to expose and destroy new age therapies and medicines and 
things of that nature. So, you know, make of it what you want. You can see, you can check that book out. I, I couldn't find it, but it's, uh, you can look it up. I said it earlier. Good. So what does the Bible say? Let's look at that, right? What does the Bible say? What does the church say? We'll go into those two next. Um, I'm not going to pretend to be a Bible scholar. I don't know the Bible nearly as well as many of you guys. I'm actually more of a new convert to Christianity and coming back to Catholicism in 2019. I'm not going to pretend like I know the Bible, but I have AI. And I have an AI Bible searcher. And I looked in the AI Bible searcher and I asked these questions. Now, let's, let's talk about what the church says. And now, in terms of an authority, an, art, an authoritative body like the medical institution, the church also has authoritative bodies, has an authoritative body called the magisterium. Now, if your church doesn't have an authoritative body, body then maybe it just doesn't count for you. You can make up whatever you want or interpret the Bible however you want. But Catholics don't make up whatever they want. We're not allowed. We're not allowed to have our own opinion and publish it and say it's true. It has to be referred to the magisterium, the tradition, which can all be found in a book called The Catechism of the Catholic Church. So found on catholic.com, there's an article titled Natural Energies Are Okay, was sent to me by a friend. And here's quoting the article and reference to the Catechism of the Catholic Church, what the church actually says about bioenergetics or anything that's associated with the language of bioenergetics. Here we go. Natural energies are okay, catholic.com. Whether a healing technique involving bodily energies is problematic depends on the way the energies are conceived and the evidence that such energies exist. There are natural energies in our body. Example, the electrical energy in the nervous system. That's what we're talking about. If natural energies are in question, then the technique is not automatically prom uh, problematic. So we're not talking about celestial energies. We're talking about energy in the body, the nervous system. I'm a strength coach. I work with the body. I'm not proposing or promoting anything that is out there. It's in here. But continuing, but if it postulates natural energies for which no evidence exists, then it involves the scientific equivalent of superstition. On the other hand, if the energies and questions are thought to be supernatural, then the technique involves superstition in the, su in the proper sense and thus violates the first commandment according to the Bible, and that can be found in the Catechism of the Catholic Church 2111. CCC 365, the unity of the soul and body is so profound that it has to consider the soul to be the form of the body. The soul is the form of the body. In other words, the body and the mind are one thing. It's because of the spiritual soul that the body made of matter becomes a living human body. Spirit and matter in man are not two natures united, but they're rather union forms in a singular nature. You look like what you are. That's my calling card for bioenergetics. If you want to know what your soul looks like, look at you. Look at your body. That's the whole point. You want to exercise your soul? You can do that on all the different levels of the soul, mind, body, and mind and feeling. But it expresses itself. Your soul expresses itself through your body. If your soul is expressing itself through your body and your soul consists of your mind, your thoughts, right, and, 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 and grace from God, if it's expressing itself fully through your body, then your body must look like your soul. Otherwise, we're not that true spectrum of body and uh, matter, spirit and matter. Body is mind. You look like what you are, <laughs> right? That's how concrete this is. And according to the Catholic, uh, the Catholic Church, we're not two natures. We're united. We're a single form. And so if you want to do some soul work, work out. You want to feel better in your mind and emotions? Take a walk. You want to release tension in your body that's holding you back from feeling connected with the people in your life so that you could be more charismatic and compelling on camera and sell more of your products, build a bigger following, connect with girls, bioenergetics, bodily movement, 
self-expression, charisma. And I'm gonna wrap this up here. So based on my research and prayer, I've concluded that bioenergetic exercises is completely compatible with Christianity. It's safe and it's compatible with church teaching. And, but here's the deal. I'm open to be shown something different. Like I said, I'm, sort of, I'm more new as a Catholic than I am in bioenergetics. So of course I'm trying to blend the two because I have an agenda. I want you to come to my grounding camps. So we do this stuff. But even with regard to grounding camp, I mentioned something in a previous video called containment. And I use a lot of spiritual containment when we're doing what we're doing in bioenergetics, not because it's a spiritual ritual, but because I create spiritual containment in almost everything I do. That means in a prayerful state. We pray before we do what we're going to do in a bioenergetic exercise at grounding camp, inviting Christ into my heart and into our experience before our engagement. And like I said, I call this containment, and it's something that I will teach you more about at grounding camp. So, what is your conclusion? What are your opinions? I'm curious what your thoughts are on bioenergetics as it relates to the practice of Christianity. Are they compatible or am I capping? Done.